Hey there. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to work with engine balance. We're going to see what it means to balance the internal components of an engine, as well as see uh, what the formula is for calculating the bob weight for a crankshaft and why uh, it is the way that it is. Um, when you're done with this lesson, you'll be able to use the bob weight formula to calculate the proper ba uh, bob weight that needs to be mounted on the crankshaft. So let's get started. So first of all, why do you even have to bother balancing an engine? Well, there's three reasons that you want to uh, balance a crankshaft and the internal components of an engine, and they're the exact same three reasons that you balance uh, all four wheels uh, on your vehicle. So you've got enough experience. What are those three reasons? Why do we balance our four wheels when we get new tires? Those are the same reasons we'd balance the internal components of an engine if we're doing a major engine rebuild. Of course, the first reason is the obvious one, and that is we want to reduce vibration. Second of all, uh, by getting rid of vibration, we also get rid of extra engine wear. Just like in wheel bearings, a wheel that's out of balance can prematurely wear the bearing, and and crankshaft that's out of balance can prematurely wear the main bearings. And finally, uh, it takes power to cause vibration, and so if you can get rid of vibration, you're getting rid of wasted power. And that's always a good thing. So there's two types of balancing. The first one is called static balancing. And in general, the word static means still or not moving. So we can balance the internal components of an engine um, without any consideration to how it's moving. That means that we want to balance all the pistons, all the small ends of the connecting rod, and all the large ends of the connecting rod. So here's what that looks like. For starters, to balance all the pistons, we uh, weigh them all, and uh, you might use a digital scale, um, but they're not all going to necessarily be exactly the same. And if they're not, we take the heavier ones and remove a little bit of aluminum from um, the back side of the piston uh, and to lighten up the heavier ones until they are all the same. So the heavier pistons get ground away to be made lighter. The lightest piston in the set wouldn't get touched. Then we do the same thing with the small ends. We support the big end of the connecting rod and weigh only the small end. And again, they're not going to necessarily be all the same. The heaviest ones need to be ground down. This is called the balance pad at the end of the connecting rod. Uh, and we grind away metal to lighten up the heavier uh, small ends so that they all weigh the same. And then we do the exact same thing with the big ends. We grind away, uh, we weigh all the big ends of the connecting rod and then any heavy ones have to get ground off. And you can see in this picture that a connecting rod has a big balance pad on uh, the end. Uh, that metal is there specifically to be removed. Once that's all done, the engine is statically balanced. Everything inside weighs exactly the same. But that's not quite enough. That would be like making sure all four tires weigh the same when they go on your vehicle, or that all four rims weigh the same. Um, that's fine, but that doesn't uh, really um, keep the engine balanced. So the other type of balance is dynamic, and the word dynamic in generally means uh, moving. So dynamic balancing um, is going to balance the engine while it's moving. So we want to balance the crankshaft as if it was inside the engine, but that's hard to do because um, we can't balance it while it's in the engine, and if we take it out of the engine, the pistons and connecting rods are flying around, so we need some way to simulate that action. So here's what we do. First of all, we break the internal components into two types. There's stuff inside the engine that's rotating, and there's stuff inside the engine that is reciprocating. And the line is pretty straightforward. The piston, wrist pin, and the small end of the connecting rod those things are all reciprocating. Reciprocate, reciprocate means to go back and forth, and you can see in this animation, those things are just going back and forth. They are reciprocating. But the big end, the bottom end of the connecting rod, that's a rotating weight, because as you can see, that's clearly going in a circle. And we have to treat them as separate things. The reciprocating weight is balanced differently than the rotating weight. So what you need to know is this. Rotating weight is just the big end of the connecting rod with its bearings and uh, rod bolts installed. The reciprocating weight is the small end, including the piston, rings, and the wrist pin. But here's the deal. 
When the piston is going down in its stroke, the counterweight on the crankshaft is going up. That is to say, when everything is moving and we need to balance all that weight. But when we get to bottom dead center, the piston temporarily comes to a stop. That means that the reciprocating weight is not moving at that moment, but the rotating weight is. And in fact, this is the key. The rotating weight is always moving, but the reciprocating weight is not always moving. It stops at bottom dead center and it stops at top dead center. And that's what gives us the formula for calculating bog weight or for simulating the weight uh, that are moving inside the engine. And so this is the formula you need to know. The bob weight is just a big old block of weight that we bolt onto the crankshaft in place of the piston and connecting rods so they aren't flopping around when we spin it up to speed. The bob weight is found by taking the rotating weight for one uh, piston and connecting rod assembly and adding it to half of the reciprocating weight. And again, the reason is that's because the rotating weight is always moving and we always need to balance that. But the reciprocating weight is not always moving and we don't always need to balance that. This formula is sort of the key for this lesson, so you'll want to put this on your conversion sheet or in a place where you can reference it. You will need to use this formula for every problem in today's lesson. Let's see how this works out. So. Um, I have the components for a six-cylinder engine shown here. These are the weights of these various components. And we want to calculate what the bob weight should be, how much weight we should put on each one of those weights that's bolted to the crankshaft. So let's start by statically balancing it. Start with your pistons. There's our six piston masses. Which one are we going to leave alone? Well, that 304 gram piston is the one that's going to get left off to the side. All the other ones are going to get ground down, I have metal removed, so that they all weigh 304. So when we're done, these all weigh 304 grams. Okay, what about the small end of the connecting rod? Which one of those are we going to set off to the side? Well, the 132 gram, there's two of them, are the lightest ones. Those we don't need to remove any metal, but all the other ones are going to get ground down until they weigh 132 as well. And finally, the big end of our connecting rods. The lightest one here is 284, so we would set that one off to the side and grind all the other ones down until they weigh 284 each. Okay, and so that means these two components right here, the piston and the small end of our connecting rod, those are our reciprocating components. And if we add 304 plus 132, if we add those together, that means that for any one of these, that will weigh 436 grams. Our large end of the connecting rod, that's our rotating assembly. And those are all going to weigh 284 grams. There's only one part, so there's nothing to add. So we know our reciprocating weight, and we know our rotating weight. With that in mind, we can use our bob weight formula. To calculate bob weight, we take the rotating weight plus half of the reciprocating weight. So in our case, that's going to be the rotating weight of 284 grams plus half of the reciprocating weight, which is 436 grams. That's 284 grams plus half of 436 is 218 grams. And that means our bob weight turns out to be 502 grams. So what that means is every place on the crankshaft that would normally have a connecting rod and piston one of these bob weights is installed instead so that when this crankshaft is spun up to over a thousand RPM just like a wheel balancer does there aren't components flopping around these bob weights are bolted securely in place and they are simulating the weight of the internal components the connecting rods and pistons unlike a wheel balancer where you add weight to make it balanced a crankshaft balancer relies uh, on telling you where we should remove weight from these counterweights to lighten up the heavy spots, but the principles are exactly the same. 
So I'd like you to take a minute now and do the same thing. I'm giving you the components of an eight cylinder engine. I would like you to statically balance it. That is to say, figure out the weight of each of the components, determine the reciprocating weight and the rotating weight, and tell me what the bob weight should be for this engine. Go ahead and unpause the video to see if your solution is correct. Okay, here we go. Static balance. When we look at all the pistons, we look for the lightest one, the one that we don't have to do anything to, and that turns out to be 291 grams. All the other ones are going to get ground down until they also weigh 291. The connecting rod small ends, the lightest one sets our um, uniform weight. 143 grams is the lightest ones. All the other ones get ground down until they also weigh 143. And for our large ends, 265 is the lightest one. All the other uh, large ends will get ground down until they also weigh 265. So the small end and the piston assembly, we're going to add those together. And if those two get added together, 291 plus 143, we get 434 grams of reciprocating weight. Our large ends are all going to weigh 265. That means we have 265 grams of rotating weight. And now we can calculate our bob weight. Here again, our bob weight is found by taking the rotating weight plus half of the reciprocating weight. So we're going to have 265 grams, our rotating weight, plus half of 434 grams. That becomes 265 grams plus 217 grams, and that gives us a total of 482 grams for our total bob weight, and we're done. So that means we would need to make each one of our bob weights weigh 482 grams before they get clamped onto the engine. Some engines, since they have two pistons and connecting rods per journal, will have you double that weight. Um, when you make each of the bob weights. But for our problems, we won't do that. We'll assume one piston assembly per bob weight. So in summary, we need to do two main things here. We need to statically balance the engine to figure out what the reciprocating weight is. That is to say the piston, wrist pin, and small end of the connecting rod. And we also need to identify our rotating weight, which is really just the uniform weight of all the big ends of the connecting rods. Once we know those weights, then we can go ahead and use the bob weight formula to calculate how much weight each of the bob weights should hold before they're put on a crank balancer. Okay, so that wraps up this short topic. Go ahead and do the practice problems, and as always, let me know if you're stuck, and I'll certainly help you out.